Lights, camera, action. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Oxford Area School District Board of Directors work session meeting on November 10th, 2020. It is 7.05 p.m. and I'm terribly sorry for starting late. So uh, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Where's Mike? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, mm -hmm. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Dewey. Certainly. Ms. Dean. Here. Ms. Harrison. Here. Mr. Patterson. Here. Mr. Tenga. Here. Ms. Warren. Here. Mr. Gaspar. Here. Mr. Owens. Here. Mr. Robinson. Here. Mr. Ty. Here. All present, we have four. All right, the agenda. Partnership with Chester County Intermediate Unit, Mr. Woods. Thank you. Uh, joining us this evening on this call are Dr. Kirk Williard, uh, Director of Programming for TCHSs at the uh, county, through Chester County Intermediate Unit, his assistant, uh, Mr. Mike Catch. And if uh, if Sean, if you could do some screen sharing right now, I'll do some explaining of uh, what is one of my goals of bringing some uh, programming in sound communication and graphic engineering uh, to the high school. So essentially, I'll go through these quickly. Uh, this would be a, a partnership if you will, with the Technical College High School as they do not have this program at Pennox Bridge. And as you know, uh, when we had some retirements, we uh, greatly reduced our wood capability, but also we eliminated for the most part our graphic arts. And this would be bringing back uh, graphic arts with a sound communication for our students as an elective, but also for our students and other students of sending schools for a completer uh, so that they could take this into post-secondary or get jobs with this right out of high school. Um, as you see, there's the program description. I'm not going to read that word for word. Um, and if we could move up the screen, please, Mr. Mellon. OK, if we did move up the screen, uh, what you'd see is the approximate instructor salary and benefits. Now they're laid out for you. Uh, I don't think you can see that on the screen right now at about fifty eight thousand four hundred forty one dollars benefits about thirty thousand or thirty one thousand approximate total salary and benefits about ninety thousand, which would be shared costs. Um, and that's something that would uh, uh, be unique through this program. It would be shared costs throughout with the uh, TCHS. Sean, if we if you can go to the next screen, if you're able to, uh, that's just the Pennsylvania. Uh, keep going. There you go. Pennsylvania Department of Education, Digital Communications, Media, Multimedia. That's the career cluster. Uh, so you see that, in fact, there is a career cluster here, and it would be a NACTI testing and certification program behind that, which would lead to uh, jobs in post-secondary. And if we want to continue on to the next uh, slide, the graphic arts and audio engineering competency list in yellow. Not seeing anything yellow. No, not seeing anything yellow yet. It seems to be lagging a little bit. There we go. OK, so this this is a several pages of just the competencies that we would be uh, looking at 
in the curriculum. And the reason I brought this forward is this would be for our completing students, but also if we had students that would take this as a period elective, uh, we would look to identify certain areas within this competency list and transfer it over to a curriculum or course of study, which we would have to do in order to assign a grade. Um, now with graphic arts and audio engineering, as you see with the audio engineering, some of these competencies are also uh, right now in our uh, TV and media design courses, but this would add another component to it and it would it would uh, let's say marry itself very well uh, within those those clusters, let's say or within that curriculum. So Sean, uh, if you can move past several slides, all those color coded slides, which are just the. Uh, you know, the curriculum or the competencies that uh, TCHS would be looking for in this course. Down to sound, there you go, there's a screen. So sound communication, graphic engineering, currently at TCHS Brandywine, uh, the enrollment as of 2020, uh, you see there's six in the AM, eight in the PM, five half-time students, four new applications for digital media as their second choice, and four to six from a private school. Uh, why that's important, those are the sending schools at Brandywine. We would be looking in, in years as we follow this uh, to get some of those same sending students. And remember when I said it was a shared cost, um, it would also be a shared uh, let's say profit sharing as well. If, if we bring in some students uh, from outside schools that would be looking to be in those classes in the half day AM, half day PM, uh, since we're, we and TCHS would be supplying the space, uh, we would share the, uh, the benefit of those students coming in. And as you see, as of September 30th to June year one, there was 21 students. By the end of the year, there was 30 students in the course. Year two, 41, 45. Year three, 51, 48. So that, that's all to say uh, that at the buildings where they have the commercial arts and sound design, uh, a standalone course or as merged courses, uh, there's a great interest out there uh, with our students. Sean, if you move on to just some of the uh, equipment that would be again uh, needing to be purchased, but be shared cost. And I'm not going to read through that whole list, but there are are obviously some some items that we would need to purchase over a three year period. Um, to offer the uh, let's say year one, year two and year three students um, because we wouldn't be jumping into this. You know, you can't jump into this with all three levels right away. You would jump in year one would just be a first level student. Then you'd build out for year two and build out for year three. Uh, and what I mean by build out is purchasing this equipment, updating the software, etc. So. Essentially, the shared cost would be about $250,000 per year uh, in order to outfit this program. But it would take place in our current room uh, where we where we had our graphic design housed with some minor uh, construction. We would be taking out the dark room since no one uses film anymore uh, for anything and uh, meaning for cameras and uh, uh, that room would become uh, a, a better utilized space. What are some of the advantages uh, to having it at our building and also to having a TCHS credit and Sean that would be the next screen where the SOAR credits are laid out and then and you can stay there in the highlighted area you see the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania developed and support the SOAR credits, which is student occupationally and academically ready, which creates a transfer credit relationship between TCHS and up to 43 colleges, Allegheny College of Maryland, State University in New York. So that's kind of a benefit. Uh, you know, the people that complete the program can get up to 12 credits that would go into college. Uh, 
in those in those areas. So it's similar to our ECA program that you know about, but it just gives us a benefit of uh, getting those credits knocked out of the way for many of these programs. Um, again, that next screen is just SOAR requirements, uh, but I want to go to the SOAR approved TCHS programs that I have highlighted. Keep going, Sean. And right there, you can see what I have highlighted, commercial and graphic arts. They have it at uh, uh, Pickering campus. They have it at the Brandywine campus, but they do not have it at the Penix Bridge campus and they don't have space for it. And we would have the space that we could house that. And that's just the CIP code uh, that uh, that qualifies for that. And if we scroll further, uh, we can see the actual summary. There you go, graphic <laughs> arts. Uh, so we would be combining the classes, but here's the graphic arts summary of what a beginner would do. Um, in other words, our first year student and our students that would be in there as electives for one period where there's room. Uh, they'd be showing basic skills in Adobe Creative Cloud applications, Photoshop, Illustrator, and, and InDesign, and research careers in the visual arts. And that's really, and then you can just take that through intermediate and advanced for three years. And then we also have the digital media and sound communication, which again, I said crosswalks over with our other course uh, in, uh, in the TV studio. Uh, but a beginner would be introduced to audio and visual equipment and technology and learn how to maintain that equipment. Uh, so we do have some abilities to crosswalk that communication uh, or, or that curriculum in communications over to uh, some existing curricular areas. And then the next slide that we have, Sean, TCHS new program survey. The thought process, if the board likes the idea of bringing back uh, some of these technical courses to, to the high school for both electives and completers, uh, this would be a survey that we would give to our students at the high school to see what type of interest there is on the part of our students to be either in a period design or a uh, half day program design first year only after uh, we're supplied with you know a five to ten minute video on what is graphic arts uh, from their current classrooms where they show projects and interactions with students and teachers and what is audio engineering from the current classroom where they're where they're doing this audio engineering and then we would do the survey and if we if we would seem that we would get enough interest at internally uh, the 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 TCHS administrators would then put that survey out to the sending schools which would be Unionville Chadsford uh, Avangrove and uh, uh, Octorera I believe and uh, we would get some type of, of knowledge base of the students that would want to come in from from those programs. So really we're at, we're at step one, but step two and three can come very quickly if the board likes the concept of bringing some of the technical skills back into the high school. And what I would say is uh, the, this technical learning would be uh, for lack of a better term on steroids than what we uh, had in the past. And that ends my presentation. Uh, and happy to field some questions. And I also have the other two gentlemen I think have joined us uh, and they would they could take some questions that I couldn't answer. Mr. Woods, I have a question. Um, start with where does this take place? At the high school in the in the room that was uh, formally utilized by graphic arts. So essentially, we're not bringing back the graphics arts graphic arts program, but we are bringing back something to that extent. We're bringing back uh, graphic arts uh, in a more robust program than what we had because they never updated their curriculum, and it also would carry uh, the ability uh, if there's completers to help have college credit 
and uh, industry certifications that they could use right out of high school. Sounds wonderful from the get-go. Let's start off with who's paying for the employee. Uh, that again, it would be a shared cost with uh, with the uh, TCHS. Okay. Um, is it a certified program? Do these kids walk out of here with like a certificate or something that they've done something? They do. Uh, if, so they so some students, in order to fill our elective role, would be in there and just take that as an elective and get a grade for it, like any other elective they would take at the high school. Uh, some students that were in a half day program there, it's just like they went to TCHS. So in fact, they would uh, receive their grade from TCHS instructor uh, at our high school. And if they passed their NOCTI or their industry certification, they would walk out at graduation with that credential that would allow them to work in the field or if they went to one of the colleges, as I said before, would receive credits for their program. And what do you like? What's your estimate on students involved? How, do you, how many do you think we're going to get? I don't. I don't know, and that that's and why. I, we would no, I know that's a hard question, but I just want to know what the. I'm, I'm missing the term, but like, who's interested in this? What so, was our what was our enrollment in graphic arts two years ago? I, I can't answer that off the top of my head. Uh, it, it was not robust, uh, but some and, and, and some were filtered in there because it was an open elective for them to take. Is this a new teacher or is this somebody that we already have on staff? This would be a teacher that would be uh, vetted and hired under the under the TCHS. So it's a, there's going to be a hiring process for this. Yes, and the TCHS administration would be hiring that teacher uh, because there there would be industry standards that they'd have to meet that are somewhat different. We would be involved in the hiring process. We would be there, but it's not something we we normally do in hiring uh, staff with a credential. Uh, for teaching. This credential is an industry credential as well as uh, teaching. So as I remember a few months ago, we dumped this program. I, I hate the way that sounds. We didn't mean to dump this program. We offered it someplace else. And along with that, we sort of farmed out, for lack of a better term, the woodshop type of program. And now we're bringing this one back. So I just want to know why we decided to bring graphic arts back and we're still pushing Woodshop off to the TCHU and uh, TCHS or whatever you call it. Um, and I believe me, I trust in everything that you do. I know what you do is good for our school district. I just, I just am uninformed and I want to know rationale uh, behind this is, is really several fold. Um, so we had again in the past we had an opportunity to save some money uh, because we had some retirements in those programs uh, and th those programs were not doing what this type of program would do. Uh, so we're choosing so seem a little bit um, more than what we were offering before. Uh, very much more than what we were offering before, uh, both in industry standard and equipment. Uh, we had some great teachers in those programs, but quite frankly, uh, uh, we did not uh, uh, elevate the curriculum to where we can elevate this now. And if you remember well, back then, it seems like this is like the up and coming thing in the in the world anyway. I mean, so. so Anytime, anytime the uh, TCHS, the, the two gentlemen with us tonight, look to put in a program, there is a, a need for that in the industry or a five-year need in the industry. And uh, both graphic arts and sound design, by merging those, are up-and-coming programs, both, both with student interest and also with employability skills uh, after secondary. So why why bring this back? And, and please remember that we still have several sections of wood. All right. Uh, but as I as I said before, 
uh, for for post-secondary and certification, it's very difficult to bring something in with wood uh, that can't be offered in carpentry. You see, so if we we have to start somewhere, and if we start with this program and this marriage, if you will, uh, that I'm talking about with with TCHS, uh, then it, we we see how that goes. So so this survey that's still up in front of you would in fact. Uh, give us an idea of students that are interested. And if, if we don't get any interest in students, then this is just an idea that's never going to come to fruition. It, you know, but if we do have interest and we can build that interest, uh, then I think it's a valued idea to bring back not not only those technical skills that are involved in graphic arts and, and marrying that sound design, but it also gives us a litmus test to bring back some other industry standard producing coursework in, in years to come. So while while we could not find a, a program that has a CIP code and and uh, some type of certification and or college credits that they could earn uh, and go right to work after graduation or go into post secondary involving wood. Uh, we did find some other areas that we could use that space for that may be just as viable, meaning working with their hands and and uh, learning how to fix some things. Uh, but but that that's something that we potentially could try later. Uh, this is step one where we have the ability to offer this program uh, to our to the sending schools to Pennox Bridge because they don't have the program at Pennox Bridge. They do at the other three TCHS in Pickering and Brandywine. Uh, so that's why this was the first program to give it a try to see A, if there's interest in our student body, B, if there's interest in the student body of the sending schools that would typically send to Pennox Bridge. And then C, we could create a program not only for our students, but for other students coming in at a reduced cost to the Oxford Area School District. And in fact, as I mentioned before, if the program fills, there would be some uh, capital sharing um, with because it's being housed at our school. So say in three years, this program is filled uh, or fills up or mostly fills up with the halftime programming, uh, there would be some financial uh, benefits to the district of housing it just like Octorera has a uh, emergency services program that we send some kids to. Uh, so some other schools have tried this as well. Uh, but again, we wouldn't jump into this. Uh, and thank you. I just got the information. So there were 65 students in graphic design to answer your questions in four sections over the last two years. Uh, but this would give us again that ability to offer. Wait, you have 65 students? 65 students over the last and two years. how many seniors this year? Uh, the, we are not offering it this year. No, 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 but how many seniors this year? Uh, I would say uh, just shy of 300. Sorry, calculator didn't work. But that's a good percentage. Uh, like that, three, that's a percentage three, of the whole, though. That's not just seniors, Joe. That's a percentage of the whole. So that'd be a percentage uh, of 1,400. Still not a bad number. No. 65 students in this program, and it sounds like a good program. If we could get interest of 65 students, uh, that would be great. But uh, uh, I think we're going to get, you know, uh, all in all over the years, I think we're going to get more than that. But year one, uh, as I was talking with Mr. Canada, we believe it's important that they understand what this program is. And I think the best way to do that is through a multimedia design that that we show them a video clip of these are the things that they would be doing in this program in year one, two and three and where it can take them. And, and you then, did say that they can walk out of there with some sort of certification out of this, right? 
they can. Not only that, but it, it'll serve as if somebody wants to take just a course for a period during the day, we would have the room to do that as well. Uh, kudos to you. I'm, I'm all for it. And thank you so much for pushing our district forward like this. Um, sure. Any other questions? I'm sorry. I sort of. Yes, if I if I may, Mr. Woods. Uh, the other two uh, campuses that are currently doing the uh, the program, will this program uh, be the same? Will it mirror those programs? Uh, so to a degree, th this would be uh, hybridized where in those other those other campuses, I believe they're standalone programs, uh, graphic arts and uh, uh, sound and video design are standalone. This would be a new concept that we would blend the programs together. And, and is our thinking that some of the kids that are currently going after those programs at the other other two campuses may, in fact, from the southern end, come to our program. Is that the that the plan here, or the thinking? Uh, so, so the thinking. It, uh, great question. So, those the other two programs serve the top third of Chester County and the middle part of Chester County. Uh, they don't have any programs like this for the southern part of Chester County. So, those sending schools are Octorera, uh, Avongrove and Unionville Chadsford, as well as Oxford, to the Pennox Bridge campus. They don't have the program there, so this would be that program. Correct. Well, what I was saying was the kids from those schools that you just mentioned, are any of those kids going to any of the other campuses for that program? Do we know? Uh, so not not that I'm aware of, uh, but okay. may, so, so let me reframe the question. So any anyone from the Southern sending schools, are they going to Brandywine or are they going to, to Pickering is what you're asking? Correct. Any any of the schools at this end, do they have kids going to the other two campuses that offer that program because we don't have it down here? Are we plan is that the thinking process that we will then be able to to pick some of those kids off? So I, I, I'm going to have to wait for that answer, Mr. Patterson. Okay. That's fine. Uh, but to answer it in part, the the the, the process or, or the thinking that we have is that uh, when they put those programs in at those campuses, those sending schools, they they saw an increase uh, in, in their or they actually populated those programs uh, to a significant point each year of the program. So there was there was interest, okay. um, but there's none that are going to and I'm getting these uh, because they had some tough a tough time logging in. I'm getting these answers on my phone. Uh, there, there's none in the uh, graphics media uh, to their knowledge right now from the sending schools and I, I apologize. I missed Kenneth Square as well. That's the sending school. I'm kind of consolidated, but uh, yeah, this would be building the program and seeing if they come. And, and again, that's why the survey is still on the screen uh, because we would not we would not look to finalize or or go on to step three or four without uh, coming back to the board and saying, you know, our, our survey results have have yielded that X amount of students are interested in this program. OK, and this would be a half day program um, versus the elective program that we had in place prior, correct? Uh, not versus it, it would be both. So uh, we, it would be a half day AM, half day PM, first year program, and also have the ability to have students uh, from Oxford fill in uh, each period when room allows. So, uh, you know, for some reason, if we filled it half day AM and PM right away, uh, then, then this would be very difficult to put some of our students in uh, just for period electives. But I don't believe that we're going to have that. Uh, I believe we're going to have the room uh, initially and for the first several years where where uh, where we'll, we we can allow or we can schedule kids uh, to fill that class to its maximum capacity just for that period. And then that teacher, uh, much like they do in our hybrid settings right now, uh, would have to differentiate 
Uh, so they work with the kids that are working in there in the AM all day or AM portion of the day, but they'd also work with period one, two, three, and four, five, if you will, uh, at the high school. Okay, thank you. There's also exploratory components uh, for our students, so it 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 uh, it works for us both ways. What about transportation? Do you have a planned start date? Who's this now? Joe, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, Todd. Sorry, Joe. Uh, do you have a planned start date? And so if if we can put everything together and we get the surveys correct, we would plan to start this next school year. Essentially September 2021. Correct. Okay. What where's the transportation costs? Who incurs those for getting children from other districts? Uh, the other districts uh, uh, provide transportation to to uh, our school, so our cost would be uh, zero for transportation. Uh, yeah, I was under the impression that the program will be at the Oxford School District High School, correct? You are correct. Okay. And and the other schools, other sending schools, if we had those, they would be responsible for transporting their students. Mr. Woods, this is uh, Mrs. Warren. Um, one question, um, just for clarification: Will we know before it comes before the board for our final decision the interest in the sending schools, or will yes. we have to make? Okay, okay. Again, uh, great question. It's not something that I would recommend we move forward with uh, prior to getting that that information. Uh, but again, it's almost a field of dreams type of thing. You know, if you build it, they will come. Uh, the 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 cost and the the curricular areas and, and, and everything associated would be year one. So I think all told, we figured this would be cost of about 600,000. But that would be phased in over three years. And that's just total out of pocket. Uh, what we didn't factor in because there's no way of knowing right now is what would be the uh, capital intake from from the sending schools? Yes. And is the cost shared half and half when you say shared? Is that what you mean? That's correct. Okay. Mr. Woods, is it possible for our school to actually make money on people who are coming to use our program so you say is it is it possible or is it legal it's both <laughs> i didn't say legal i just want to know yes it is if we're putting the bill for the program and people are coming in do we charge exactly what it would cost us for the program or do we get i mean is it kind of like the it, so so charge? again it, it it's a cost share at 50 percent uh understand we would be uh, putting some of our students in there on a period type of schedule for uh, a very much reduced cost. So what the what the capital outlay would be when we split that at that same 50% ratio with TCHS is, is unknown at this point. Uh, I could get some some figures uh, when, where the, where they run programs in other schools. Um, for example, the sports medicine program is run the same way at Unionville Chadsford. The emergency services is run the same way at Dr. Era. Uh, so, so there is some capital coming back in, but what that would be really is dependent on how much that program fills from the sending schools. My, my whole concern was I just don't want to be paying for people from other schools to use a program that we implement at our expense. Right. Uh, that no, you you would be it, there would actually be a, a positive revenue stream back to our and that zero revenue stream is fine. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. There would be a positive revenue stream coming back to our school district, whereas right now, if it was a TCHS housed at uh, the Penix Bridge campus or another sending school, that would be a pure outlay of capital at our, our three year rolling average rate. So say that would be, you know, what what is that about uh, 
about 11,000 per student, 10, 11,000 per student uh, that we spend. I think that's correct, roughly. Uh, Maybe a little bit more than that, but let's just use that as an example. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to recoup that if we didn't have that program at our building. So it's actually cap from a capital outlay standpoint, it's advantageous to us. Uh, it's starting to sound like a win win to me. Any other questions for Mr. Woods? And now where does this go from here? Do you you advertise for um so action steps from here yeah yeah that's i want to know like what's our next step because it's certainly nothing we can vote on especially in a work session but it's not going to be on next week's no uh, it won't be on next week's agenda so right. the next steps from here uh again the the uh i want the uh the tchs tchs people to produce a multimedia uh, uh, showcase, if you will, uh, so that we can lay that out to our students of exactly what this program actually is and what it can do. And then on the heels of that multimedia showcase of their programming, that's when we will uh, authorize the uh, survey that you see in front of you. Uh, get the results back of that survey and share that with the board uh, hopefully uh, in December to uh, determine if this program is viable and if the board wants to fund the program. At that point, we would bake the actual costs into our budgetary process and uh, start the process of advertising for this program if indeed we have the numbers in the TCHS books and with our students during scheduling. And when I say the TCHS books, that means those would be laid out to the sending schools to the Penix Bridge campus, which to be correct are Kennett, Unionville, Chads, Fort Octorera, Avangrove, and uh, Oxford. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Any further questions for Mr. Woods on this idea, project? Thank you and, and thank you because my phone was blowing up over here because they, they this is the way they can communicate uh, uh, to Dr. Willard and, and Mr. Catch uh, for giving me some of the answers that I didn't know uh, going in. That's why they were present. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining our meeting tonight and taking the time uh, out of your schedules. We appreciate it. Any other questions for Mr. Woods? Tax forgiveness, Waterway Church, Media Mennonite Church. Mr. Cooney. Thanks, Mr. Tax. So um, this made it to the agenda uh, tonight, um, kind of having its roots um, back from a letter that was sent as a communication to the board in September. And then the Finance Committee uh, dove a little deeper into this um, after we've done some research in my office regarding the request. Um, at this last month. So uh, the Finance Committee agreed um, that it should be, you know, put up for discussion at the entire board level. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at tonight. I'll give a brief um, a recap or paraphrase of the request so that it can be discussed tonight. And if indeed the board so chooses, we could put that on the agenda um, as early as next week. But uh, essentially the, the crux of the issue is and the Media Mennonite Church purchased this land where they had built their new facility. Um, people have probably seen it out on Waterway Road. Um, in 2011, when they bought the um, property, it was part of a state um, program that is um, for designed uh, for farmland uh, that basically uh, eliminates uh, the tax burden. So uh, they enjoyed that tax status for years. Um, however, once they broke ground on the new facility, they, they breached some of the uh, regulations regarding that, um, the, the requirements of the program. So when that happened, the way that the law is written is they essentially then became 
uh, liable for back taxes all the way back from the, to the purchase date. All right, so um, essentially the church got a tax bill for about 10 years worth of taxes that they, you know, had not uh, previously, you know, faced under the, the old program. So um, they have since uh, filed for an exemption as a religious organization. My understanding is that status will be granted in the 2021 year. However, um, as of right now, as it stands, the county essentially sent them a bill as they should have um, for those back taxes. So the letter was, you know, kind of explaining that situation, also detailing some of the things they do in the community, and essentially asking for the board's consideration on forgiveness of those taxes. So that's where it stands. All right, I'm going to start because I'm the bad guy. Um, Mr. Cooney, how much are we talking about? The school district's portion, the last time that we've gotten an update from the county, we calculates the breach and all that stuff, was $18,700 and change. And when did they purchase the property? 2011. Now, I've lived here that long, but I know that when you have property and it was like, that's whatever section that is, that's the agricultural section, right? Where you don't, you just pay reduced property taxes because you're going to farm that land. Is that correct? So yeah, the program they were under, they used it for the appropriate reasons. So from 2011 until the day they broke ground on the new building that was to be used for not farming, they were in the clear and they were, you know, in compliance with that program. Um, so they essentially, you know, they did have protection from paying taxes during that time. But again, as the as the law was written regarding this program, if you do breach it, it goes back to the date that you purchased it. So uh, that's why the bill essentially is so high. Now, so, Mr. Cooney, the, the intent of that law is to keep people from selling out of agricultural use, correct? I, I would think that's the intent, um, you know, and of course, um, you know, I, I, I can't speak to, you know, what, what the underlying issues were and when it was written, but um, I think obviously that's the, that's the, you know, the incentive people have to keep it as farmland, right, would be to, um, you know, avoid those taxes. I'm sorry, I think I interrupted Mr. Patterson again. No? Can you, Mr. Cooney, can you hear me? I can. Okay, um, what year did they uh, break ground? And then what would be the amount from the from the year they broke ground to, to today? What would that number be? Do we uh, have that number? I don't. Um, I'm looking through the emails right now as I'm speaking to you. It's some of the back and forth I have with the county. I don't see it offhand as to when they actually began building it. Although I do remember a conversation that you know, it took some amount of time. I don't think that it was a quick project, if I can say that. Um, so I'm not certain. And then also, too, um, the county would be the ones that would have to calculate that. I don't think it would be unreasonable to ask, um, but I'm not certain. I'm just thinking in the event that, you know, the board goes that way, at least we have that number. And I don't know that it's fair to penalize them back if if they didn't know um, based off of whenever they did break ground from that point on, uh, technically they, you know, they would be liable for it until they uh, received their um, elimination, which I think you said comes next year, correct? Yes, um, you know, so, you know, another way, realistically, my understanding of this, that this could have happened and where they would not have been liable at all it would be as if they had filed for the religious exemption and gotten it approved prior to starting the building. If they had done that, I don't think they would have ever faced a bill. Um, but unfortunately, that's not, you know, the the right. work of operations, and you know, that's this kind of the situation they're in. Mr. Um, Kearney, I, excuse me, uh, I uh, if you need a date. I think it was about three years ago okay. that they actually started to think about breaking ground and building the church. But I'm sorry, uh, I believe someone else had the floor. 
Mr. Robertson, it was it was me, Jennifer Warren, and I was just going to say that in their letter to us, it says that the construction began on the in 2019. Okay. So I'm assuming that's roughly when they broke ground. Yeah. Mr. Cooney, is this something we can negotiate? Can we just tell them we'll split it in half? I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, I, I would definitely, you know, seek some legal advice on that. I mean, I do know that, you know, in terms of, you know, the board certainly has the authority to, uh, you know, waive our portion. I, I'm not certain. I'm not saying no. I'm not certain it's a negotiation situation. I'd have to get clarity on that. I just want to make sure that we're not in an all or nothing situation. And I, I feel for these people. I go to church. I get it. But they know the laws they messed up and that's not our fault so okay what if my grandmother decides that she didn't pay her tax i mean you know what i mean it's just for me personally i'm like wait a minute you have a liability if you didn't do the right thing it's a liability good i'm an accountant and i see it all the time with everybody's taxes trust me but um i don't see that we should be out of line and not let them have something but i mean again i'm one voice so i don't think we should give them a complete free ride on this i think the visuals on that and the kickback on that is probably not going to be so good so maybe if we can come up with some sort of compromise Pay 75%, pay 25%. I don't, just throw it out there. Just my thoughts. So, it's Jen Harrison. So, from 2011 to 2019, it was indeed, although it was farm. As such, as such, we wouldn't have been getting, there was no taxes there that we would have been paid anyway. But because of a mistake where they broke ground without applying for something first, it backed them up to 2011. Yep. So now we're talking about 2019 to 2021, where they don't have their exemption, but there's taxes due. That's that's correct. So and also too, just, just to be clear, I mentioned it before, but this like the county has no discretion there it you know like it was a state program and the guidelines were very clear so like you know they didn't really have any choice other than to say there's been a breach here's what the you know the requirements are now here's your bill um you know and they similarly they don't have the authority to waive it uh, the portion of the school tax is a tax levied by the board um so you know they essentially they're basically utilizing, you know, the proper channels here in terms of trying to trying to move forward with it. Yeah, the laws are written. I mean, they're written. I'm not sure that they're accurate or good or what they are, but what's written is what they're being penalized with, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is Jennifer Warren. Could we... Uh, Go back to the is I don't know if it would be the county and and have them um, calculate what it would be from the time that they broke ground to now what that tax por portion would be uh, given that the period of time that they own the property prior to that they were actually using it in in accordance with the program. I I say yes as in. That's certainly a calculation that can be done. I don't want to speak for the employees of the county. Um, you know, they might turn around and say, I'm very busy. We're not doing that. I don't suspect that would happen. But um, again, I, I know they could come up with that number. So I could certainly have that conversation and say, you know, here's a date and time. You know, is it feasible for you to provide me what it would be from that? You know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think I feel with Jen Warren. The 2011 to 2019, since it was being used in the intent to it, um, the 19 to 2021, where they failed to apply for yet something else, I, I feel like maybe the tax liability there. I, 
I'm sorry, Jen. What what point were you trying to make there? I'm sorry. From 2011 to 2019, that I feel like okay, maybe what's that portion? It was being used. The farmland was being used for farming. Um, but from 2019 to 2021, where it was in use as you know the building, but they failed to apply for the exemption in a timely manner. I don't know. I mean, it was in fact being used as a, I, I don't know, as a church. But oh, what's yeah, I drive by it like every day. I saw them building it. From oh, is it actually an open church now? To my knowledge, yes. Have they gotten exemption certificates for today and going forward? No, so my understanding is they applied and they went through the process, but it does not go into effect until the next tax year. Yeah, it's not a fast process, I'm sure. So, yeah, 2021, they would be exempt. My issue is that if they had gone through the correct process in, a, in the correct time, the money wasn't ours. Like, we aren't supposed to be owed money from a church. So, Brian, I know we discussed it before in the Finance Committee, but we never really said whether we should do this. But I was wondering, could you talk to Waterway and find out why they didn't apply for the exemption when they should have, and then maybe we can make a better decision from there. Because if it was a human error, yeah, it shouldn't have happened, but it's that's a different situation because we weren't owed money from a church, but because they messed up, now we're owed a lot of money that we never would have gotten otherwise. So it just doesn't seem fair to me. Um, that's just my two cents. And if that's the direction direction I'm given, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, you know, I, I likely would not have looked to have that conversation on my own because I wouldn't want them to think, that, you know, I have the authority to, to do any of that. You know, but if the board would like me to inquire and get more information, I'll certainly do that. The other option is I can do it. Um, that's fine with me. Absolutely. But if it's better for you, that's, that's fine, fine too. So yeah, Kristen, I don't think you should do that. I think that's more of a Mr. Cooney thing. Okay, that's fine. So um, my only concern there is if it was in, I don't even know what they call that, 319, whatever you call it, but it was in agricultural mm -hmm. and somebody bought it, they had to know that they were paying reduced property taxes for however many years. And then when they started to build and they started to break ground, they had to know that that's going to violate that. And believe me, if everybody else is on board, I'm a, I'm on board to waive the whole thing and say, you know what, thank you very much, glad you built a church, and let's forget it. But it just it doesn't seem right. You know, I mean, like you knew it was in agricultural reduced property taxes. And then you broke ground without telling anybody. And now it's not. So it just seems sketchy to me. And I apologize for how that sounds because I'm a jerk. Everybody knows that. But um, it just, come on. If I was building a church and I knew that property was in agricultural, believe me, I would have gone through all the hoops I had to to make sure I didn't have to pay that back property tax. But you're an accountant, you're not a pastor. <laughs> so I'm yeah, making an assumption here that we don't know. You should find out first and then we can decide. But you know what they're going to say, oh, we did, we forgot, we didn't know. I mean, I can tell you the answer to those questions already. I, I don't know. I'm glad you're not sitting next to me. <laughs> me? So yeah, trust me, my wife hits me enough. So, so Mr. Cooney, go ahead. Can, can you find out what the difference is, if possible, from yeah. when they broke ground to now and what, what they owe? I think everyone's in agreement that the penalty of taking it back to day one when they purchased the property um, is not something that any of us are interested in. However, they are liable 
from the time they broke ground to now to pay the taxes and that can be something that the board can then decide if they want to charge uh, charge them or waive that amount but I think we need to know what that amount is am I correct um, from what I'm hearing from everyone that sounds reasonable to yeah, me I'm with that. Uh, but it sounds like we're talking about the whole 18 grand really right it's yeah. the it's the eighteen thousand minus whatever the penalty was from twenty eleven to twenty nineteen when they broke ground. So whatever when that's removed, whatever the difference is, is what they would owe. Um, and that then at that point, when we find out that number, then the board can decide whether they want to waive that amount or whether they want to apply that amount to them and, and make them pay it. Um, but I think based off of what I'm hearing from everyone uh, and I'm in agreement with, I don't think that they should be held for the pe the penalty from 2011 that the, the stipulation that, that Mr. Cooney said automatically went into place when they defaulted um, and then it charged them back from 2011 uh, from the time they broke ground. Do you have any idea, Mr. Cooney, what the county's doing? Are they trying to collect those funds or are they betting them off? Mr. Tyler, um, again, I can't speak for them, but what I think they're doing, I think they're waiting for us. Really? Yeah. Uh, so um, he here's what I'll do then, it, it, just as a recap, right? So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to investigate, you know, what our authority is in terms of changing the amount, right? So that'll be the first thing. The second thing will be to try and determine how that amount was comprised, right? Which I think I know exactly how it was, but we'll look and figure out what it would be if it was only the years in which they were working on the church and not the years when they were farming. And three, I'm happy to reach out to the folks at the Waterway Church and see you know, how they came uh, to be in the situation. So um, I believe I can probably get all of those things done in a reasonable amount of time, and we'll put this back on for discussion again. But now we're pushing this to the December work session, correct? If that's There's nothing that we can put on the we can't vote on this yet I mean, no. yeah there's no chance i'd have it by next tuesday all those answers i just don't know whether it's our place to punish them for something that for funds that wouldn't have been ours in the first place had they had better advisement if that is in fact the, the case i don't know whether it's for us to let them, if it was it if they had done their paperwork properly, they would have been a church and we wouldn't have gotten the money. And if they had continued to farm it all of this time without breaking ground, we wouldn't have gotten the money. So I don't see where we get to be the punisher, but I don't know. My opinion. I'm hearing pins drop. Anybody else? This is Jennifer Warren. I, th I think Mr. Cooney had a good path forward. I believe it was also Mr. Patterson's path that he suggested. If everybody's willing, I'm going to let them just roll with it and just be done with it. Wave the whole thing if you want. We put it on next week's agenda and just be done with this. Don't we have enough problems? I think it's a little more involved than that, Joe. I mean, you have to consider them as a, as a regular taxpayer and you have to treat everybody the same. So I think we need to do our diligence first and then we can figure out where we go from there. We may not even be able to reduce that amount based off of Mr. You know, Cooney's um, statement that he's not sure so we have to see if um it's something that we can even reduce and then at that point you know we may be talking about the whole amount so let's see what we have that's a good point sorry but we have waived taxes in the past correct yeah. i'm just saying let's do it the right way if we're going to do it and again the only way the only reason why i'm a little bit more unclear about this one is it does involve the fact that you know, this was a state program. It does go back X amount of years. So uh, it's a little bit different than a current year where we're going to waive a penalty, right? Or somebody missed the discount. 
Um, that's obviously within the taxing years, well within the board's discretion to do so. This one's a little bit more involved. I just definitely want to make sure before I give you any advice on that, that it's a legally sound thing you can do. So, um, yeah, I can certainly investigate that. All right. So we're looking at this for the December work session again. Mr. Gaspar, any input? Mr. Is there a December work session? Joe, is there a December work session? Yeah, no, is there a December work session? I think we only have the, re, re, no, the, the thing shows reorganization meeting. Oh, shoot, I think you're right. Is that correct, Mr. Woods? That is correct. It's the reorganization meeting, but we can have agenda items on uh, after the reorganization meeting, combined agenda. Okay. So this may end up being a January work session item. Right. Mr. Woods, correct me. I mean, if, if if as long as we have this data in time, I don't see why we probably couldn't at least come back with answers as a discussion in December. Yes or no? I mean, you tell me. Again, yes, yes, we could. And it, we, after the work session, we could advertise and run, or sorry, after the reorganization, we could advertise and run a combined meeting work session because we, we typically have been doing that year over year just to take care of some housekeeping items with bills, et cetera. So we could in fact do that at, on December 8th, advertising not only for a reorganization, but after the reorganization, we could run a combined work session and regular meeting if you so chose. Sounds like a hoot. All right. Are we done? Anybody got any questions? So we ended up here with Mr. Cooney's going to do some follow up work for us, report back to us on whether or not we can um, forgive partial or move forward total forgiveness, or, and this will end up on the next work session of the board. Is everybody in agreement? So, yeah. Board goals. I have the wrong mouse, sorry. All right. Um, let's just start at the top. Does everybody, everybody has a copy of what we had for last year? Yes? No? Yes. Yes. All right, under personnel, revamp or evaluate superintendent, assistant superintendent evaluation process. And I do believe that Mrs. Warren has taken lead on that. And I do believe you're making moves on that as a correct. Because I, I think, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you've done so far is to have the evaluation sort of funnel back to the actual goals given to us by the superintendent and the assistant superintendent, which I think is an awesome way to start so that we can evaluate if they're actually doing what we want them to do. I don't know, is that the mouth base here? Somebody take over, please. So the, the ad hoc uh, committee is still meeting and we're working through that process right now. Uh, on the evaluations. So the goals are part of that. But they're also working through the actual evaluation. I think the action steps that we've been tasked to do is is to uh, try to bring it more to an Oxford centric evaluation process. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah, because the the matrix that we had was just from the PSBA, right? That's correct. Yeah, OK. Um, budget. Anybody see any changes needed there? I like keeping taxes low. I'm sure, most people do, but um, we may not be able to do that for much longer. Any input, discussion? Not getting one at all. No. Um, no, I, I, I think we. It says keep it to a minimum. Doesn't mean that we can't. That 
we, we I think we will have to raise taxes, I'm guessing, but try and keep it as low as possible. Communication. Um, have we been advertising committee meetings at least two weeks in advance? I believe we have, yes. And I, I never like to throw shade, but I was very upset with the way the website looked for the kids going back to school. When people were coming to me and asking me as a board member, I don't know when my kids start school. That was that was awful. And I know that you've corrected that. You put a big banner on the front so like you click and where's your when does your kids start school? And my child started school today, so everything I guess is going okay. I don't know. Um board members I have not done this. I have not visited two schools per year. I know that Mrs. Warren has. I know that Mr. Patterson has. I'm not sure. I think uh, Kristen has. I don't know about anybody else, but I have not. So I think that's still a good goal. Yes? No? Mr. Ty, this is Jennifer Warren. I agree that it is a very good goal, and I think we should continue to, to try for it. I wonder if, uh, and I believe this was suggested perhaps by Dr. Owens, that this is not maybe not the year to have that in the goals be, because we are uncertain uh, what we will be able to do with COVID, uh, even in a oh, hybrid yes, setting. Yes, you're absolutely right. Whether yeah. that would be a, yeah. So yeah. Uh, knowing that we would probably add it back, um, but perhaps this year might not be the year to keep it in. I, I would certainly, this is Eric Owens, I would I would certainly be concerned about A, adding more people into the schools unnecessarily and B, causing any extra stress on staff right now. There's enough to do. Deleted. How about this? I'll just hide it and we'll bring it back next year. <laughs> All right. Survey district staff to assist in determining any areas where improvement may be needed. Who thinks that we've been doing that? I know that we've been surveying district staff. I'm not sure how that really turns out. Anybody got any input? Well, yeah, I mean, I can say that the staff has been surveyed uh, through the school visits. And is what was your... Is, uh, that, is, is that what you're referring to, Joe? Yeah, but absolutely. Tell me what you think about it. Okay, and I think, um, you know, our plan moving forward out of the ad hoc committee will be to to try and make sure that we're getting feedback um, from all the different levels of uh, of our stakeholders. So uh, we have a complete picture of. Uh, of what's going on. So should we leave that in there? Yes. Okay. Uh, safety and security. That's a whole new world right now. That is correct. I'm not even sure where to go with that. I mean, Mr. Woods, got any input on this? Because it's your schools. Certainly. I know uh, you have to be doing whatever you can do, and I know that you're taking orders from the governor's office or the health department or whoever you're taking orders from, but a lot of this is no longer up to us. So I, I would certainly leave that in as a board goal, uh, not only with our safety and security uh, that we've been doing uh, over the past several years with our school police officers, uh, but I would also uh, link that with safety and security of keeping a safe 
building uh, under COVID-19 uh, for our for our stakeholders, staff, and children. Uh, so I, I would definitely leave that in there because we we've been using funding and we will continue to use funds uh, for uh, PPE and and uh, the like uh, related to a safe building, but also with uh, with our uh, ongoing security measures. Okay, improvement. Board members attempt to resolve community concerns and issues only after proper procedure and personnel avenues have been exhausted. Is that working out for you, Mr. Woods? Yeah, I would again, I would keep that as a goal as well. I seem to get a lot of community um, contacts that I try and push forward to the appropriate principles of the schools. But sometimes it's, you know, people are they're emotional to get out of hand and then, you know, they want to know what's going on, like the whole with when does it go back to school thing? And yeah, I believe everyone uh, gets those on the board and, and that's why I think it's good to have that in as board goal for the, you know, appropriate setting, the appropriate answers and the appropriate uh, uh, disbursement of uh, information. So we would certainly keep that in as, a, as an annual goal. So just me, like I said, one voice out of nine, but I think if we're getting contacts from the community, the first place that goes is the principal of whatever school that's involved and then the superintendent. And I don't think we should be contacting people, talking to people. I mean, yeah, yeah, you have to answer people. I get that. I'm not trying to say that. But if somebody calls me and says, yo, this is messed up, well, I may say to them, thank you very much. I appreciate your input. Let me direct you to the principal of this school, and I will copy the superintendent, and one of them will get back to you. I think that's our best way to move on stuff like that. I mean, we can't, we can't. Hey, know. Joe. Yeah. If I may, I, I think um, what we need to do there is, is allow each board member to um, handle it the way that they feel um, they need to handle it. However, I believe you're correct that there needs to be communication with the other parties that are involved. Um, whether it be, you know, the, the superintendent, um, which I think he should be copied on on most of those. Uh, and then if there's a principal issue, um, I think that it should be left up to the superintendent to to handle that. I don't know that we should be, you know, getting into that, th those weeds. But again, I'm not going to dictate to people um, how they need to resolve them. Uh, but I do, one thing I do want to touch base on this, I think it's very important that we try and maintain a chain of command where things can get out of hand real quick. And they can. And, and going back to my military experience, when there was something wrong with somebody on my team and they went above me to my supervisor, that ended up blowing everything out of proportion where I could have had to sit down with this guy and made everything okay. You know what I mean? So I just don't want us to undermine the authority that the school principals, administration, superintendent, assistant superintendent. I don't want us to jump in there and, and like tear that up because we're not going to make it better if we do that. We're going to end up with people having an avenue to go around their proper chain of command, which I don't think is ever going to work. But like I said, just my point, just my opinion. Board members attempt to complete six hours of training. Has anybody done that? That you have, Jen. Yes. <laughs> I love her. I have not. Has anybody else done this? The new Act 55 and Act 18 and Mr. Woods, those numbers need to be updated. 
I don't think those numbers need to be updated, but we just need to understand that moving forward after the next elections, I believe everyone's responsible to do that. Uh, however, as I explained in the past, as as elected officials, the uh, uh, you know usually it's a carrot stick type of thing. Uh, it's just a carrot with the uh, with the hours. There is no stick. So, I mean, we actually have to do that, right? We have to do six or four or something. But, well, as I suggested, it's required, correct? It is required, but what happens if we don't? Uh, there's really not a vehicle for that. This is Jennifer Warren. I have a, a question on that. Is there someone that, that keeps track of that? Is that a board secretary function or is that just we keep track of our own? So uh, as you and I think you did this uh, as you complete those, you would uh, let let Mrs. Kell know and she'll make note of that uh, and share that with the board secretary, meaning Mr. Cooney. Thank you. I think we should make Mr. Cooney in charge of it. Just for fun. Noted. Um, public relations. Board members attempt to attend sports community activities. Um, do believe that was a Dr. Owens point to me, and you're absolutely right. There's no chance we're doing this. I mean, if we even have yeah. sports. <laughs> yeah, that's like we have to eliminate this, or just how about I add a little something in that says when sports are allowed again, or something to that effect. I mean, I'll put something together and, and do a little update on this stuff and send it out to you guys. And I, I know this is all subjective at best. So, Mr. Ty, this is Jennifer Warren, yeah. if I might. Um, one, uh, it isn't on here at all that I would like to, to have us think about. Um, and that would be under improvement, but adding that uh, we uh, create and complete a board self-assessment annually and i think that we would do that kind of prior to uh developing these uh goals that if we did a self-assessment we might see some areas where we need to uh, work on uh, establishing goals sorry i'm typing trying to take notes different computer so you think that we should have some sort of board self-assessment that we can put in there. Do you have any ideas of what that might entail? I, I don't. I haven't I haven't looked at it yet. Um, I have thought about this for a while and I think it, it probably is something that uh, in my mind would would be part of the process of the uh, work that we're doing in the ad hoc uh, personnel committee. Yeah, and thank meeting. you for that, by the way. It's fantastic. Um, you're welcome. Um, so, uh, it w but I do think it would help in this process of creating goals because um, it would it would allow all of us to sort of assess where we think we have um, been successful the past year and where we think we might need to work uh, for imp for improvement. And some of our goals will be ongoing and will always be there, but some of them I think will. Um, change from year to year as appropriate and there are just goals it's not it's not a concrete list of what we need to do tomorrow but you know what jen or excuse me mrs warren i'm going to go ahead and i'll update this and i'll forward it to you but i'm going to leave i'm going to put in there what i think you're trying to tell me and please feel free to correct anything that i do Sure, and I don't have, well, there is no document yet, so that. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all subjective right now, yeah, so. And of course, right. we'll be creating the document if we were to do that. All good, fine. Um, do we beat this up enough? I think that encapsulated the board goals. 
Any other questions or comments on board goals? As I said, I will just type something up and I'll forward it out to all of you. And please feel free. It's going to be an Excel document. Change whatever you want, send it back. And then we'll send it out for everybody to be approved. Shoot. I don't know if we're going to make next Tuesday, but we'll give it a shot. Um, any questions on the... Oh, sorry. Next. Any questions on the regular meeting agenda? Yes, I did. I had one, if I may, from Mr. Woods. Can you hear me? I, I can, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, under... Um, I lost that screen. Um, I believe it was under the consent agenda, and I think it was. Uh, I'm going to try to get the screen back. Yeah, just let me know what page, Mr. Patterson. I believe it was 5C under consent agenda, but give me a second. I got to minimize this screen and try and get back to the other one. Um, it was, excuse me, under new business uh, 5C4. Uh, under that, it, was that um, was that because we were unable to provide the service or they, they were not happy with them, what we were providing? I was just curious on that. Go ahead. Give me, give me a minute. Sure. It was a settlement agreement. Yeah. I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. That's OK. I'm, I'm thinking right. that could be a legacy. Um, but obviously, uh, in a settlement agreement, there's a party that's unhappy with something. Sure. I just didn't know that they were unhappy because we didn't have that service or we did have the service and they were just unhappy with it. I was just curious. And I will get back to you on that. OK, thank you. You bet. Any other questions on the regular meeting agenda? Everyone knows we have an executive session following this meeting, correct? Yes. 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 Yep. All right. Um, any changes to the calendar? I would like to add uh, the um, ad hoc personnel committee meeting for 630 on December 8th. You know that December 8th is just a reorganization meeting, correct? Not like a work session or anything. Do you still want to do that? The combined meeting uh, or work session <laughs> meeting? I actually make sure that you know that like the reorganization meeting is we're going to go in there, we're vote, we're going to leave. Right. 
Yeah, that that would be up to the board, and that's not a decision we could we would have to make tonight if we. Well, no, but Jen's in charge of the policy committee, and if she wants, or the ad hoc committee, if she wants to have that meeting that day, that's fine. I just want her to know. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were. Really not a, it's not like a work session. We're not going to be there for three hours. Right. We, we we were unable to meet before next next week. And so we would like to meet one more time before the end of the year. So we are aware that that is the uh, reorganization meeting. Okay. Thanks. Six thirty, December eighth. So calendar. Uh, Tuesday, November seventeenth, budget and finance committee, six thirty p.m. Tuesday, November seventeenth, regular meeting, seven p.m. That's next Tuesday for everybody. Uh, Tuesday, December eighth, at six thirty, ad hoc personnel committee. And Tuesday, December 8th, reorganization meeting, 7 p.m. Are there any visitors need to be recognized? I don't believe we have any questions, Joe. No, we do not. Nor do we have any visitors. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. 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 All right, see you all in four minutes in a different meeting. <laughs>